Welcome to Heart to Heart about everything lupus, where we discuss everything about lupus. I'm Susie van der Welt, or as most of you know me, Susie Eagles Flight. I've had lupus for 18 years, started the first lupus support organization in South Africa 17 years ago. I'm on the steering committee of the World Lupus Federation, and I'm one of the managing members of Lupus South Africa and serve on the board of Andreas Gift. Today we are going to talk about a lighter subject, but it's still something that bothers most of us. It's lupus and brain fog. What is brain fog? It's a type of mental dysfunction involving memory problems, lack of mental clarity, poor concentration, and inability to focus. So all, all, basically, it's feeling foggy. Just a note, I've had two strokes, so please bear with me if I struggle with pronunciation. So, get a cup of nice hot coffee or tea, put your earphones in, sit in a relaxing chair, and let the two of us discuss lupus. Lupus and brain fog. An estimated 80% of individuals with lupus will experience brain fog. Learning what may contribute to brain fog and how to manage it can improve your day-to-day quality of life. It's not unusual for an individual with SLE to complain of of feeling like they cannot concentrate, to be easily confused and have memory problems. These symptoms and others are collectively known as lupus brain fog. Learning with this kind of cognitive dysfunction can make accomplishing even the most basic of day-to-day tasks extremely difficult, which can be frustrating and even scary at times. Developing great self-awareness about how an individual is affected by the brain fog Being able to pinpoint where the brain fog sets in, when it lifts and about an individual's health at the time they are experiencing the brain fog may give a greater insight into the mechanism at work. This knowledge may in turn help an individual work successfully with healthcare practitioners in order to develop better coping and managing strategies when navigating through the fog. Understanding brain fog, being aware of when it starts, the symptoms, can help you deal with it and shorten the time that it's active. This is a part of getting to know your body and your lupus. And when the brain fog starts, then you can start with the necessary steps to get through it faster. I know my brain fog starts the moment my body is struggling or I'm in a flare. It's always a joke in our house and that helps me not to stress stress about it and just to start my exercises and do what I need to do. And sometimes it stays longer, but other times it goes faster. Main thing is, don't get stressed out. Take one day at a time. Stress will worsen it, and it's not good for your health too. Just work hard to get through one day. Face only today's trouble. The big picture is overwhelming. Do all you can to help your body for today. Eat healthy, take a walk, learn more about lupus, make it through today. Tomorrow you do the same. That is how you live beyond lupus. And this is basically my motto for lupus, one day at a time. Because the moment I start focusing on the big picture is the moment that I start stressing and and telling myself it's too much.
Characteristics of Lupus Brain Fog This is how fog may be presented in an individual with lupus. Depression, memory problems including remembering small details, headaches, fatigue and sleepiness, confusion, rust, rushed speech, difficulties in movement, and problems doing daily tasks because of impairment. Most doctors acknowledge that there is no specific profile of cognitive dysfunction among individuals with SRE. Each experiences brain fog as uniquely as they experience SRE itself. Lupus is not a textbook disease and each of us are different. There are some specific areas, however, that seem to be most negatively impacted, including working memory, attention, planning, and multitasking. Exactly what I struggle with. I used to be a huge multitasker. Now, please just one thing at a time. That Dr. Megan McKay also acknowledges the fact that cognitive dysfunction can be hard to define and may not be reported accurately because practitioners may use different and sometimes unreliable methods of assessing brain impairment. Symptoms can also be very subtle and because of this an individual might just ignore and accept how they are feeling as their new normal. I know in the beginning I did exactly the same. I said, okay, this is lupus, I'm going to carry on with my life and that's just going to be part of my life and I'll have to get used to it. No, you can help the brain fog. You can work to stop it. Individuals with SLE may also fail to report or discuss behavioral changes with their healthcare practitioner, especially since the fog cannot necessarily be attributed to any one thing. McKay points out, however, that no matter what the reason, these symptoms need to be recognized, discussed and treated, and individuals deserve to feel their best. Some individuals with SLE can be classified as having neuropsychiatric lupus, NP. SLE. When an individual has NPSLE, they suffer from one or more neuropsychiatric symptoms. Fabrizio Conti, neurologist, and his team identify these characteristics as neurological manifestations. I apologize. Pain and sensory issues. Psychological manifestations, changes in mood such as depression and anxiety, and cognitive impairment. In 1999, the American College of Rheumatology developed a more definitive criteria for diagnosing and defining NPSLE. The ACR included 19 neuro psychiatric symptoms and they include anxiety disorder, cerebrovascular disease, seizure disorder, severe confusion, headaches, moon disorders, neuropathy, autonomic disorders. It's important to note that not all the individuals with SLE and brain fog have NPSLE, though according to a 215 review published in a medicine journal, up to 56% of over 2,000 individuals with SLE studied showed NPSLE manifestation. Distinguishing between the two is imperative for individuals with lupus to be able to openly discuss how they feel with their healthcare practitioner in order to be properly diagnosed and treated. I think, and I've also found that 
the longer you have lupus, the more you move you 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 move to NPSLE. So you might be diagnosed with it in the beginning when you have lupus, but others may not. And the longer you have lupus, it actually happens, and it's quite you know evident. It it really is. What causes lupus brain fog? Researchers are working hard to determine what exactly is responsible for lupus brain fog. Lupus UK notes that stress, mood disorder, fatigue and even fibromyalgia may be to blame. The use of corticosteroids may contribute to cognitive impairment but that idea is somewhat controversial. But all in all, it can. But it's also a medicine we cannot avoid if we have SLE. In 2012, study published in Arthritis Scan Research Journal even suggests that physical activity and obesity may impact cognitive function in individuals with lupus. Patricia Katz and her team of researchers found that women with SLE and who were also clinically obese showed signs of cognitive impairment, especially in executive function, which is merit, memory, the ability to plan, and multitask. The same was noted for women with SLE who did not exercise regularly. This often brain fog may be caused by an underlying issue that has not been probably properly diagnosed. One of the most compelling explanations, however, is increased antibody activity. So individuals with SLE who has also have increased antiphospholipid activity or antiphospholipid syndrome are greater risk of experiencing cognitive dysfunction. Having blood clots, those are indirect antiphospholipid syndrome. Specific antibody activity may affect the hippocampus and it plays an important role in the long and short term memory and spatial memory that helps with movement and navigation. The amygdala is also part of the limbic system and is responsible for helping us process emotion. It is linked to feelings such as fear and pleasure and also linked to conditions such as anxiety, autism and depression. Now the amygdala and hippocampus, we're not here for a brain lesson, but if you on your side of your head where your ear is just above that and then going downwards with the ear that is where the hippocampus and amygdala is located. In another study researchers Maria Lavosnes and her peers assessed 50 individuals with SLE and 50 individuals with primary Sjogren's syndrome. Individuals in both groups with the cerebrospinal fluid antibody anti NR2 also had reduced hippocampal gray matter, which was associated with a prevalence of cognitive dysfunction. So, Sjogren's, which is one autoimmune disease that many of us have is also one thing that can help um, bring on um, brain fog. Testing cognitive function. The American College of Rheumatology Neuro Psychological Battery, ACRNB, consists of 
12 scores, which touched on each domain. It is also long and takes approximately four hours to complete. There, are, there is a shorter SLE specific battery, that's ACR SLE, and that's more targeted and takes approximately one to two hours to complete. Researchers John G. Hanley and his team suggest that individuals who believe they are experiencing cognitive impairment first complete a self-report questionnaire to determine if more objective diagnostic testing is necessary. As of in 2019, the testing methods has been validated for use in diagnosing cognitive impairment in lupus. The NM test, which is the automated neuropsychological assessment metric test consists of 31 test modules but can be mixed and matched according to need. The text test takes between 20 to 40 minutes and is done on a computer with minimal interference. There are neuropsychologists neuropsych in South Africa but a neurologist and psychologist psychiatrist can also perform these tests. And doctors are usually um, or usually have their own tests that they use for cognitive dysfunction, uh, neuropsychiatric lupus, um, and brain fog. So I, this is just the regular test according to the American College of Rheumatology that is used. Managing Lupus Brain Fog To date, there are not any medications that can be prescribed to specifically treat brain fog. I found my way, it works for me, it doesn't take it away, but you get through it faster. Often, if there's an underlying issue that is identifiable, a drug reaction, anxiety, or depression, a healthcare practitioner will intervene to treat that issue, and in turn, the fog may alleviate to some degree. Yeah, for example, like I said, if I'm in a flare, the, br the brain fog comes immediately. And then I know I had to do I have to do my part to get rid of it. But once I'm through the flare and the doctor has treated the flare, then it definitely becomes better. If a lupus flare coincides with the fog, managing the flare might turn in turn manage the fog. Lupus UK suggests that if the fog is caused by antiphospholipid syndrome, blood thinners may be used to treat the APS. And this may help with the cognitive function. There are, however, however, coping strategies that can be used to manage overall well-being while experiencing brain fog. Definitely my favorite. So rheumatologist Dr. McKay suggests the following. Foster a good emotional envi environment. A strong support system is key to helping to manage the symptoms. That is what helps the most, is that you have your family and those that help you around you form a solid relationship with the healthcare practitioner. Building trust with your doctor, so that you're open discussing these things with him if he refers you to a neurologist or neuropsychiatrist or neuropsychologist, then you need to build a relationship with him or her to enable you um, to be able to talk about what's going on in your life. Practice self-care. Taking care of oneself by eating right, exercising, re relieving stress, staying away from alcohol and tobacco will go far in nurturing overall well-being. I mean, that is something we basically preach every day. Take care 
of the mind as well as the body. Remember, I always say we are so focused on the physical symptoms of lupus that we leave, don't worry about our mental health. And it, it's understandable because those physical symptoms, you have to fight for yourself and you have to get rid of those. But please note that your mind, your cognitive function, your mental health, everything is just as important as the physical body. Consider cognitive behavioral therapy. Working with a therapist or another mental health care practitioner can help individuals develop good coping habits to deal with brain fog and related stress. Sometimes it even just helps to talk a problem through and have someone who is unbiased listen. A good mental health practitioner will also recognize symptoms of anxiety, depression, and help treat those. So basically, cognitive behavior therapy is basically, uh, I mean, I can do a podcast all on its own about cognitive behavior therapy, but the problem is identifying what is causing you the stress. Then see in your mind, that is not going to kill me. I'm going to be all right. Um, everything is fine then facing that problem by using your mind to tell you that that problem is not as bad as it seems. That's practically the gist of cognitive behavior therapy. Is it changing your cognitive behavior, your mind behavior towards a stressor, a problem, a disease, um, and now mental health if you, if you go to that. The following tactics is used daily to help make life a little easier when experiencing brain fog. Stay organized. Use your journal, your medication, your dosages, your symptoms, um, your mental health, what you're experiencing, your feelings. Stay organized. Identify brain fog triggers. Like I said, I find when I'm in a flare, then my brain fog starts. It can be stresses. Uh, it can be anxiety, whatever you're feeling um, when your brain fog starts. Know that. Write everything down. Just like I said, don't leave anything up to memory. Use lists. Learn memory techniques. Um, apps on phones. Ask your healthcare provider. Search for techniques in the resources. In the show notes, the first two resources are ways to manage brain fog and there are also exercises in there that can help you. So, all in all, what are the ways you can help yourself with brain fog? Eat healthy, exercise, taking a walk, stay organized, list, 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 and the following games help. Seek and find, it helps with concentration. Word games, helps with your language. Cube games, help with your cognitive um, issues. And Sudoku, helps with num number problems. But please let me just mention, I have by no means stopped my brain fog at all. It's still there, frustrates me most of the time but it's definitely improved and it's not there as long as it used to be. The impact of lupus brain fog on our quality of life. There is no doubt about it. The impact that brain fog can have on quality of life is, is real. An individual may not only feel the psychological effects of cognitive impairment, but it may also affect your work life, sleep quality, and mood. It's obvious your work life will become a problem because you cannot, you're not able to do what you usually do. Sleep quality, you are struggling 
and that is causing insomnia and mood. I mean, anybody would be upset if they're experiencing brain fog. Being open to ask help and communicating with others can help an individual who is experiencing brain fog to maintain a better quality of life. Really ask for help. It is a big problem in the lupus community. We don't ask for help. We try to do everything ourselves. So please ask your loved ones, your supporting network, your friends for help. Here are some suggestions for, take, for talking about brain fog with others. Be honest. An individual should let trusted friends and loved ones know when they are experiencing challenges with memory. Encourage uh, each other to help remember things. You can ask others for friendly reminders while that you are not feeling up to par. Your family members become your memory in some instances, and it's normal. They are there to help you. Let others know that this too shall pass. Family and friends that are close to you might get stressed out if they see you experiencing memory prominence, um, you know, talking, uh, concentration, and they might think, that, it's, that is the new normal, and it can stress them out. Tell them, let them know, this is brain fog, it doesn't last forever, it comes and goes at this point in time, it is a bit um, intense and a lot, because, for example, I am experiencing the, 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 the following, you know. So that can help too, if they understand what you're going through, they will also be able to help you and not stress as much. So, in conclusion, while experiencing brain fog can be incredibly frustrating, being patient, communicative and willing to make some lifestyle changes can be incredibly beneficial. Practicing self-care and working with a team of trusted healthcare practitioners can improve your health, emotional well-being, and overall quality of life. I have just found that doing all these things helps tremendously, but brain fog still comes. It's understandable. We fight a chronic illness daily. The basic step to take is not to freak out when you have it. Stay calm and just know this too shall pass. But until it does, I must do everything in my power to stop it from affecting my quality of life. And this method, method really makes a huge difference. Remember in the resources, there are links to help assess and manage your brain fog. It's definitely worth a try. That concludes this podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please review it on the platform you are listening on. Please, people, give me feedback. I really need to know if you like it, um, what other podcasts or other things you would like to talk about. It's very important for us to know what you want in the future and the topics you want me to discuss. Please like, share and follow us on social media, Andrew's Gift, Andrew's Gift Twins and Teens, Lupus South Africa and Susie Eagles Flight. Bye-bye.